Ah, what questions do you have? How many problems is the food going to be today? Uh, I believe I have four. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit more about polar coordinates, and then we'll do the quiz at the end here. All right. So we started chatting about polar coordinates last time. We talked about <clears throat> what it means to be, uh, what the co polar coordinates mean. Remember again, the R coordinate means how far away you are from the, the pole or the origin, if you will. The thing that tells you what angle the ray that would be going through that point makes with the polar axis or the positive x-axis, if you will. <clears throat> so we did some plotting of points. We talked about multiple representations of points. So just review that again real quick. If I wanted to write all of the points that have this, uh, good uh, representations of this particular point that match with this one, remember there's a couple of ways to do that. If we want to keep the same R value, what do you do to the angle to find all representations? What, what other things can you do with the angle? Yeah, good. You can add multiples of 2 pi, right? Because remember, anything that would be co-terminal with the angle would land on that same ray, right? So one way to do it, if you keep the same R value, so in this case we kept the 2 being the same, then we can find other representations for the same point simply by just adding or subtracting multiples of 2 pi. If we changed it to a negative 2, then what do you have to do with the uh, angle first before you start doing the plus 2 n pi part? Yeah, it's basically rotate it 180 degrees or add a pi to it, right? So I could add pi. Pi in this case would be 12 pi over 12. So it would be 23 pi over 12. And by the way, you can either add pi or subtract pi. It has the same effect, right? It's the same rotation, essentially, because one goes positive and one goes negative. So these would be all of the possible ways that you could represent that point and be in the same point in the plane. So you've got the co-terminal idea. We talked about that way back at the beginning of the semester, right? That's the adding multiple to pi. We've used that in multiple contexts. Most recently, we use that for writing down all the solutions of an equation, right? In that well, co-terminal aspect or the periodic aspect of our trig function. Remember, again, the negative really is just kind of an orientation idea. This point would still be two units from the pole. We just kind of count backwards when we start, when we try to plot. We talked about that. So why do we care about polar coordinates? Well, for our purposes right now, we don't see a lot of reasons why we would care, but sometimes it's easier to express a relationship among points in polar than it is in rectangular or in Cartesian, whichever way, whichever word you want to use. What I mean by that is, Notice that when you start plotting points, you're going around at an angle, right? Well, what kind of things go around when you're talking about plotting them? Circles, right? And it turns out that circles or pieces of circles tend to be more easily expressible in polar than they are in rectangular. And it pops up later for being able to convert back and forth between these things to help you solve problems in calculus, for example. All right, so let's talk about how those conversions work. So again, in pol if this is the point here that I'm interested in, well, we've got x and y coordinates for that point, but we also now have r and theta co coordinates for that point. 
We've just talked about last time and briefly today that the R would correspond to the distance from the pole, from the origin, to the point. The angle, again, is the angle that's made through the ray that goes through that point and the positive x-axis or the polar axis, right? That's how we get those coordinates. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. How about the x-y coordinates? On this triangle that you see here, what would be the x and what would be the y? How do you get the x-y coordinates? What's the x tell you? How do you know how to plot the point, say, 2, 5? What do you do? Yeah, we can go right 2 and up 5, right? So again, on this picture, uh, where would I put the x? Yeah, on the x-axis, and you put the y. Yeah, the y, it'd be the y coordinate, right? Going up and down. It's exactly how you plot the point, right? You go right and up, or left and down, or however, depending if it's positive or negative. But in particular, it's how I would label these sides. All right, so now we're going to talk about how we can get some conversions between rectangular and polar involving these quantities and treating this like it's a right triangle. So first, give me an equation that relates x, y, and r, and ignores theta. Give me, a, give me a relationship between x, y, and r, and it ignores theta. Yeah, that's just Pythagorean theorem, right? <clears throat> By the way, in calculus, if you see an expression that involves an x squared plus y squared in it, that's kind of your clue that you might want to try to convert to polar. Be like get rid of two variables and make it in terms of one. Okay. Just as a well, one of the reasons why we care. <clears throat> All right. Now, can you give me a, re a relationship that involves x, y, and theta, and does not involve r? Sure. So is that sine? No, that's tangent. That's tangent. Good. Good. <laughs> you can use sine, but not in this what I, not for what I was asking for. Right. So tangent would be y over x. Good. So what these two particular equations are good for is if if you are given x and y, you can find r and theta. So this, these would be the two that you would use to convert from rectangular to polar. Okay. Given x and y, we can figure out what the r and figure out what the theta are. <clears throat> All right, so let's do with two more. Can you give me a relationship that involves x, r, and theta, but not y? x, r, and theta, but not y. Good. Good. Cosine of theta equals x over r. And a lot of times we'll, re we'll rewrite this as x equals r cosine theta. The one we don't have yet is a relationship between y theta and r and not x. What would you use there? Sine, that's the sine one, right? Sine of theta would be y over r, and again, we typically would solve that for y. These two equations now would be the ones that you would use to convert from polar to rectangular. If you're given r and theta, you can figure out x. If you're given r and theta, you can figure out y. So these are your four conversion formulas that you'll want to remember. Two of them, again, typically are used to convert from rectangular to polar. The other two are from polar to rectangular. All right, so let's see if we can put these to use.
This one asks us to convert each of the following points from polar to rectangular. So again, I just told you that if you're going to use, I'm sorry, if you're going to convert from polar to rectangular, you want to use the x equals r cosine theta and the y equals r sine theta. What's r in this case? The r? Two. Two, there we go. And then the theta is? 3 pi over 2. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> and now we just need to simplify. What is cosine of 3 pi over 2 equal to? Zero? Good. So this is just going to end up being zero. The other one, we'll do sine of 3 pi over 2, uh, 2 times sine of 3 pi over 2. What's sine of 3 pi over 2 equal to? Down, right? It's negative 1. Yeah. So we get negative 2. So your rectangular coordinates then would be 0, negative 2. Let's just make sure that this makes sense. Okay. I don't have a graph here, but let's say I wanted to plot the point 2 comma 3 pi over 2. So remember to plot the polar point, I would go, since my r is positive, I would go right 2, and then go around to 3 pi over 2 on that circle. So I go up, around, down, and 3 pi over 2 is down here, isn't it? So when you plot that point, you would be down here. Does that look like the point zero, negative two in Cartesian? Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? Because again, if you think about it, there's another radius that comes out of the pole that would be like this, isn't there? It would be two units away. So I really do see the zero, negative two. For the next one, again, we're going to use the same conversion formula. We're given r is 1 and theta is 5 pi over 6. So we're literally just plugging in the values of the conversion formulas that we have. Cosine of 5 pi over 6 is good. And sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 over 2. Good. So our coordinates would be negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. Going from polar to rectangular is pretty straightforward. It literally is just a matter of plugging them into the number. Just making sure you keep your x and your y straight. <clears throat> okay. Even when you don't have something that has a pi in it, if you're telling you to go from polar to rectangular, then this would still be your r, and this is still your theta. Okay. So the instructions here are going from polar to rectangular. You would use x equals negative 3.2 cosine of 5.8 for the x and negative 3.2 sine of 5.8 for the y. And then you would put your calculator to get an approximation, <clears throat> making sure again that you're in radians to get your approximation. Because unless you see a little bit of greedy symbol up here, you always assume the angles are in radians. Anybody actually put that in a calculator? Uh, X is negative 2.833. Okay. And then the Y is 1.4873. So then if we put that in an ordered pair form, we'd have it this way.
And those numbers make sense to me as far as the, whether they're positive or negative. 5.8 is almost 2 pi. 2 pi is 6.28 ish, right? So this angle is in quadrant four. So cosine would be positive, but you're multiplying by a negative. Sine would be negative, and you're multiplying by a negative. So the fact that this one's negative, not as positive, makes sense. Questions on those at all? Well, let's go the other way real quick. This one requires us to do a little bit more work. And we'll see what that is. Not, not for the R, it's the theta we have to do a little bit more work. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. So this one says go from rectangular to polar. Well, the R is pretty straightforward. We'll use the R equals x squared plus y, R squared equals x squared plus y squared. So when we square, 3 squared is 9, root 3 squared is 3. So you get 27 on top and 4 on bottom. The other one gives you 9 on top and 4 on bottom. So when you add together, you get 36 over 4 or you get 9. So r squared equals 9. Take the square root of both sides. Technically, you get plus or minus 3, but we'll use the positive here and just have r equals 3. I don't want to have to be overly clever to figure out my theta and use a negative r value. <laughs> okay. So when you're converting from rectangular to polar, use your positive r. Don't try to be too clever with the r on this one. Okay. Okay, the other part is that we want to figure out the angle. Now, this is where you have to be a little bit careful. Oops. I'm still going to plug it into our uh, formula. We'll put the y in, so the 3 halves in for the y. The 3 root 3 over 2 in for the x. When we simplify that, notice the 3 and the 2 will cancel. And we end up with 1 over root 3. Here's where the careful part comes in. Not the fact that I actually have to find the theta, but making sure the theta is in the right spot. Remember that our tangent is positive in quadrant one or in quadrant three, all right? So I have to go back and look at the original point to make sure that I'm looking in the correct quadrant, okay? So in particular, both of my coordinates are positive, so what quadrant are we interested in here? The first quadrant, right? So I want the theta that's in the first quadrant that gives me the one over root three for my tangent. If they were both negative, then you'd be looking in quadrant three instead. Okay. That's the only thing you have to really be careful about, is just making sure you're in the right quadrant. Okay. <clears throat> and that's particularly true if you actually have to use your calculator to do inverse tangent. Okay. All right. What angle in quadrant one gives you a tangent value of one over root three? Now remember, the, the way I usually think about it is tangent is sine over cosine. So I want the cosine to have a root 3 in it. Pi over 6. Yeah, that's the way I typically think about it, not have to worry about what my tangent values are. Since the root 3 is in the denominator, I need the cosine to be, have the root 3 in it. Okay. So then your polar coordinates would be... 3 comma pi over 6. Does that make sense? Let's look at the next one.
So again, we'll use our r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Square your x and your y. Both of those square to 2, so you end up getting 4, don't you? So r is 2. What is tangent of theta going to equal in this case? Good, exactly right. So we'll have y over x, so it'll be square root of 2 over negative square root of 2, which gives us negative 1. So now again, I have to pay attention to the quadrant when I figure out my theta. Tangent is negative in quadrant 2 or quadrant 4. Which quadrant is the original point in? 2. So the x is negative and the y is positive. So we're in quadrant 2. So I need the angle in quadrant 2. That gives me negative 1 for the tangent. But I'll just look at the, when, when is tangent equal to 1? Pi over 4. In quadrant 2, then we'll use... 3 pi over 4. Good. So our theta will be 3 pi over 4. So the point's in quadrant 2. So your coordinates will be 2 comma 3 pi over 4. Does that make sense? Is that okay? Right. I'll leave the last couple there for you, for the uh, last few for practice. Apparently I have two C. No, I have a three C's there. What the heck are I doing with my numbering there, or lettering? I do want to do just a couple of these real fast, and then we'll do the quiz on uh, converting the equations, and we'll do more of these after break. These ones are asking you to go from rectangular to polar. Okay. So we can use any of the equations that we have to help, but basically we want to get rid of x and y and put in r's and thetas. Okay. I don't want to have any x's or y's left when I'm done. Okay. So let's look at the first one. What can you plug in for x so that you only have r's and thetas and no x's and y's? What can we plug in for x? are not quite tangent. Cosine, get yeah. cosine theta equals five. And then a lot of times, if you can, you'll solve this for r. If you divide both sides by cosine, you would get five over cosine theta, but one over cosine is the same thing as secant. So converting that equation to polar, gives you 5 secant theta. One of the interesting things here is, if you think about this back to a rectangular, that is a vertical line, which is not a function, but r is a function of theta here. So it changed something that was not a function, y in terms of x, into a function that was r in terms of theta. What do you get for the next one? What will we plug in for a y to get rid of all the x's and y's? Good. R sine theta, and then multiply, uh, divide both sides by sine, and you'll get R equals negative 4 cosecant theta. Cosecant theta. Let's look at this third one. What can you put in for x squared plus y squared to get rid of the x's and y's. What can you plug in for x squared plus y squared? R squared, yeah. So we'd have r squared equals 16. If you took the square root of both sides, you'd get r equals 4. Now think about this. 
What kind of a shape is x squared plus y squared equals 16? What kind of a thing do you get? A circle, right? That's definitely not a function because it doesn't pass a vertical line test, right? This is a constant function in polar coordinates. It is very much in a function. It's a constant function. Notice again the simplicity of the formula. This is why we like polar coordinates if we have things that are circles or pieces of circles. This is why we like it because it makes it much simpler. That last one, you would just plug in r cosine of theta for x, r sine of theta for y, factor of an r, and solve it. We'll talk about that after break. Uh, I just want to make sure you have time to do your quiz. It's not a big deal. I'll just talk about it after break. Does that want to make a point about it? Anyway, like I said, there's four problems on the quiz. Two on the front, two on the back. Yep. Sorry. 